Hello, my name is Mira and I'm a lore keeper in one of Yonkstas libraries and today I wanted to talk about the Deep Ones. The race first appears in his short story Dagon which was written in 1917 and published in 1919 but would not be named until The Shadow Over Innsmouth which was written in 1931 and published in 1936. Deep Ones are definitely one of my favorite fantastical races. They are also known as fish folk, Kelpie, mermaids, sea demons, sea people, scaled ones, sirens, and those from below. The Deep Ones are humanoid beings with a combination of fish, human, and amphibian traits, often described as having gray or green tinted slippery skin, white stomachs, scaled ridged backs, webbed clawed hands, and gilled necks. They have heads similar to that of a fish, with mouths filled with sharp teeth and eyes incapable of blinking. They are said to move around by hopping or occasionally moving on all fours. They are described as having croaky voices and speaking a language that is not English. Deep ones are a very diverse species, much like the fish in the sea, and come in a variety of subspecies, including one that is virtually blind and lives primarily in underwater caves. The town of Innsmouth has a pact with the Deep Ones. Dagon and the Deep Ones bless the town with abundant fish in exchange for interbreeding. Deep One hybrids, those that come about due to the mating of Deep Ones and humans, are always shown as having come from a female Deep One and a male human. The reason for this is similar to the reason that a liger is always born from a male lion and a female tigress. It is a safety measure based on both parties being those that possess the limiting growth gene of their own species. The offspring of these unions are usually born as normal humans, with the changes in their appearance occurring typically in the late teens. Physical changes are accompanied by a new awakening of senses, dreams of undersea cities, and a pull to the ocean. By the time they reach middle age, they will display some sort of deformity and will retire to the privacy of their homes until they are capable of fully living underwater. Apart from the physical changes, they will begin to feel a scorn for humanity, an affinity for non-Euclidean artwork of the Deep One race, and the powerful desire to abandon the human world and go to the Deep One city of e Honfio. Within a few years, they will undergo their final transformation into a full Deep One and leave their life on the land to begin a new life in the sea. The majority of Deep One hybrids inhabit remote coastal villages, and as the final transformation takes place, the hybrid either learns to accept their heritage or they go mad in the process. About 10% of hybrids will not complete the full transformation and will live the rest of their lives as half human, half Deep One, while another 10% won't show any signs of transformation at all, with the Deep One gene resurfacing in a future descendant. And that's pretty much it. I hope to see you guys next time. Here in the library.